So the topic here today is how can you transform the way you screen your patient, the way, the way you read your patient, the way you provide solutions that go beyond just a nice smile and beyond even a healthy mouth, really empowering dentistry, making dentistry play a much more important role in well-being in general through these new principles of holistic care, comprehensive diagnosis, uh, and biological dentistry. So I asked Dominic to join us here today to talk about these trends. And of course, we're going to discuss conceptually what things mean in this environment, but I want to bring to you some very pragmatic, realistic suggestions, tips, things that can help you give your first few steps towards taking better care of your patients, okay? So first of all, Dominic, thank you so much uh, for participating. Once again, uh, I want you to give a, a, a hello to the DSD community and give a quick introduction about who is Dominic and what is biological dentistry. Thanks again, my friend. Chris, thanks, my friend, for having me. And hi, DSD community. I'm happy to, yeah, show you my way of, thinking and yeah, I'm a specialist in biological dentistry and ceramic implants. I'm also a naturopathic and functional medicine doctor from Germany. And yeah, biological dentistry, what we're talking about in the, the definition, in my opinion, is it's the overlap of the high-tech dentistry you guys are doing with functional medicine and health optimization slash biohacking which enables us to treat our patients for one common goal, I reckon, which is optimal health. Current medical yeah, approach for, let's say, health is more like health is divine, defined as absence of disease. And we're taking it a, back, a step further um, into optimal health. And in my opinion, I believe this starts in your mouth and mm -hmm. because it's the entrance to the overall system. And this is yeah. where we're going to have a look in today. Optimal health starts with your mouth. I like that slogan. 100. Optimal health starts with your mouth. Uh, can you repeat again, uh, Dom, the three concepts that are overlapping here? You said high technology. I would say high tech dentistry, which includes, of course, metal free and high tech dentistry, like all the things you do, digital plannings, mm -hmm. cone beams, the stuff you already know. This is one part, high tech dentistry. Mm -hmm. Top notch. Then combine this with functional medicine. Functional, functional medicine is a. This is a medical um, field that deals with the overall patient. We do more um, comprehensive blood works there. We focus on nutrition, macronutrients, micronutrients, intravenous uh, therapies of vitamins and other things in terms of um, preparing. And we're taking way more. So the history of the patient and his his, let's say, genetics and the epigenetics play a big role in how to find out why these people get unhealthy in the first place because we're living in, a, in an epidemic of chronic disease. Mm -hmm. And it's not that we're really um, healthy overall, which you can see at the common, um, yeah, like the overall picture is mm -hmm. that we're like not as healthy. So functional medicine is one big part. Blood and, the work. Third and the third one is a field called health optimization, which in itself is, in my opinion, the perfect description of what we do. We optimize health. So current medical, let's say, dogma is health is defined as absence of disease, but this is not what I'm after. I'm after like top-notch performance. I want to sleep perfect. I want to healthy and don't if possible not age too fast but the opposite like get mm -hmm. as get as old as young as possible maybe mm -hmm. it's also commonly referred to as biohacking biohacking is a little bit more of the thing that cool kids do so biohacking is sometimes referred to as like high technologies in this field like tracking your sleep data with the stuff i have on my finger too it's an aura ring mm -hmm. or other measurables so basically um Tracking yourself, understanding yourself better. Yes, tracking things to get better results. Like Peter Drucker said, for management, what gets measured gets managed. The same as 
true today with health and optimization. So I have a blood glucose monitor on my arm. I, I track my sleep. I basically track everything for the last years as much as possible. And for 20 years, I'm doing all these things, fine tuning my body and of course the patients. So by tracking, you can fine tune the strategy. You can improve the strategy. You, you can customize the strategy. Exactly. Basically, blood work is kind of like a tracking too, but blood work is very like, let's say it's one single page and mm -hmm. in seconds it changes. But imagine you could see your blood sugar levels throughout the day just by what you eat. How are your body? How is your body reacting to various sorts of carbohydrates? Is it really tolerable or is it like very, are you insulin resistant? This is something that helps us with overall chronic inflammation or what about tracking your sleep? We are all in the field of, I'm a surgeon, so I want to have my patients recover as be the best way possible. So of course I want to optimize their sleep because when you sleep, you get into parasympathetic nervous system, you get yeah. recover, you, you regenerate, you detox, but you cannot imagine most patients are not able to do so because they're in a chronic state of sympathetic mm -hmm. nervous system. But what if we can all measure this now with mm -hmm. HRV, heart rate variability, heart rate? You just have to know like these single dots and then connect them and like, you can do so, stuff on yourself. So a doctor like you needs to really, first of all, help your patients to, to track themselves a little bit better, you know, add some tools there to give some extra information beyond the normal. And then you specialize, of course, on reading these numbers, reading these uh these, these this information to create a strategy and provide the strategy to the patient correct in yes in my opinion it has to start with the practitioner themselves you have to know what you're doing and practice what you preach so it's really a change in your mindset you're becoming the high-tech dentist anyways but you also can help patients and yourself get to next level of health and performance so you will learn it on you and then you super easy and it's super easy mm -hmm effective to track them and help them track makes them accountable so mm -hmm. they cannot say oh the doctor ruined it they have to take responsibility yeah. and you can track it so they they are more like yeah. and I, I, I love when you say i love when you say you know uh, it's not about only not getting sick but is improving your performance you know uh, it, we have so many solutions now that we can go beyond just not getting sick you know we can really have a better life by improving performance. And here, when people say performance, maybe some people say, oh, they're talking about how to support athletes and professional uh, athletes. It, it's for an everyday person. It's for a normal person, right? You can have a better life by improving your performance on all these basic things by going to a doctor that understands health optimization, functional medicine, and how to use technology to track your numbers. So you said in business, you know, whatever you can track, you can act on. You know, if you have metrics, you can manage the issues, right? So this is what you do with uh, biological dentistry as well. So I'm going to ask you something very, very simple to start here. You know, I can already imagine that if I go to a very good dentist, but that doesn't have this v vision, that only take care of conventional dentistry. You know, if we, I go to this dentist on the first appointment for the first time, and then do a very good first appointment, following all the basic rules of classical good dentistry. You know, the pictures, the x-rays, the clinical exam, uh, maybe a CVCT, you know, uh, the questionnaire, the conventional questionnaire. So my question is, if I, instead of going to a conventional good dentist, if I go to a good dentist that is also a biological dentist that works with these things that we are talking, what are the main differences of this first appointment? What do you add to your first appointment when you see a patient for the first time to give you ammunition to provide them this extra care? Very good question. Exactly. It is just the next level and just an upgrade. So um, what we give our patients, so the, uh, probably the medical question already is a little bit more extensive uh, up front. So we will, of course, ask for all these optimization questions like how is your sleep and what about some gut issues? So we will ask overall minor things that don't qualify as a, let's say, as a sig sig sickness or something, mm -hmm. but more like, a few symptoms, I can't sleep well, I can't sleep through the night, I wake up multiple times, so sleep is very important. Mm 
-hmm. We will also ask, how is your energy level throughout the day? Can you wake up without the alarm? Do you have like multiple times when you like crash throughout the day? Like performance asking questions. We also ask about nutrition. What does their lifestyle look like? Their nutrition, their lifestyle design, what are the foods they're eating? And how much do they use the Wi-Fi? How, how close are they to a, let's say like cell phone tower? So we take a lot of care about EMFs. And because we want to know how their genetics act in this world, which is, is a, it's a field of, it's called epigenetics. So genetics is only this big. It's kind of like talent. If you have talent, but you don't train, let's say you got, would be a perfect sprinter, but you never train, you won't become one. So uh, the same is true for genetics. If you have, let's say you can't detox very well because you have this genetic SNP. But if you have your lifestyle, like as natural as possible, the genetic SNP doesn't care because you are, your epigenetics are natural. Yeah. And this is what we're all about. Basically, we are asking how unnatural is my patient living right now? How optimized is this already? Because nine out of 10 points actually for everything we are going to do and you know the goal is optimal health is your daily lifestyle what do you put into your mouth in terms of food what did you have in there in terms of like restorations that might disrupt you or interfere with your epigenetics epigenetically so we ask of course all these questions and to get an overall picture we also will do a little very fast finger prick um, vitamin d3 level test just to see if you're in, I call it hibernation mode. If your body's like in hibernation means you cannot regenerate because your vitamin D3 is too low. It sank through, let's say winter time. I'm in Germany, so six months of the year, there's no sun. If you're in Brazil, you're a bit more lucky. Mm -hmm. And I'm so it's the same. Um, so we check the vitamin D3. Also, all my patients will send in blood work before because there is no initial appointment like this. But if you would start it, we would also probably, if they come in, of course, for dentistry, we will check um, different uh, metals and if there's allergies, there are a few. We call that environmental dentistry. It's a part of biological dentistry. Mm -hmm. You have a few blood works. Of course, you have to take a little bit of blood and then check, is this patient maybe allergic to titanium? There's something called the titanium stimulation test, which you can do in a lab in, in Berlin, which mm -hmm. will really show you, oh, this guy is already this immune system is already attacking the titanium particles on a daily basis, titanium stimulation test. We can also do a LTT, lymphocyte transformation test, it's also a blood test, for any material in your mouth, starting from gold, like, you know, I, all you dentists guys out there, you know, it's like different alloys, and basically you can become allergic to everything. So this is something we will check before because we're always dealing with the immune system, the autonomic nervous system, and various other things in the body. Yeah, it's, it's like a whole picture. It's not just the mouth. The mouth is the entrance to your whole body mm -hmm. and not outside body. So we track all these measurements. Of, and of course, like you said before, of course, we also do all the conventional dentistry. The conventional, yeah. yeah. So, CT, for sure. So if, if, if I'm going to you and I'm, I, I'm going just because I want to have a checkup and a hygiene session, or if I'm going because I want 10 veneers, or if I'm going because I need a full mouth rehabilitation or I need implants, it doesn't matter the situation. Once I go to you for the first time, you're gonna always go beyond and, and kind of cover all these things that you just sa said. You're gonna incorporate this into my first appointment. Is that correct? Exactly, it starts even before, but yes, why? Because it's kind of like a challenge. We want to have an impact on the overall health of the patient. This is a mindset switch. So of course we do the perfect aesthetics and smile design and everything, but the end, at the end, the patient comes in for various reasons and you will always get testimonials like, oh, my chronic back pain is gone. I can smell again um, I can sleep better. Um, my depression is gone. My, my belly is better. And also, of course, I got some nice teeth. It's not like, oh, wow, it's only the focus on these tiny things. It's included in the whole picture yeah. because we have doctors to do everything. And of That's course, right. yeah. I, I love that. I love that approach because, you know, as I mentioned before, we always say, you know, aesthetics should never be the priority, should be always the consequence, you know. And that's because usually if you're very healthy, you're functioning well, systemically, you're doing well and you're happy, you know. It's well-being and happiness. You usually naturally look better anyway, right? 
So I yeah. love the fact that, uh, you know, since aesthetics is such a drive for people and more and more, even in Germany, people, I want a perfect smile. I want the ideal smile. I want a better smile because the media is really show you need to look good. You need to look good. You need a better smile. And once you, you end up on a biological dentist, you get all these extra benefit actually that becomes the main thing. And it, and it's like re-educating the patient, right? You need yep. to, you need to re-educate the patient. Otherwise they, they will take it for granted or they're not going to value or they're not going to understand. So you probably have like a session where you, explain almost like saying you don't know how lucky you are but by the way we're gonna go way beyond what you were expecting is it 100%, something like that 100 <laughs> percent, yes and this changes totally so i did a little bit of research lately because i'm so focused on my things so i had to interview a few conventional dentists and so the normal the normal patient actually doesn't like to go to see a dentist it's more like oh no i have to go to see a dentist and he will drill a hole or maybe i'm lucky and i don't have cavities and whatever uh -huh. and some people, of course, go to a specialist for just veneers. They're very happy to have a new face and like a new smile. But most dentists actually are dealing with patients that don't like them. And they have to discuss money all the time. And if there's a cheaper solution and is insurance covering this. So it's really negative and doesn't make any fun. Mm -hmm. Imagine patients coming in for a total new perspective. You can do your work, your tiny craftsman stuff anyways, but you're also able to get fans that you're helping with their overall systemic health. and i'm totally agreeing with chris here a healthy body is always aesthetic and also a healthy body is immune against cavity and against mm -hmm. all these problems mm -hmm. so when you train them with a new mindset that they really take care about themselves afterwards and take responsibility for their lives mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. your lifestyle. you will have a way bigger impact on top of the nice work so they will appreciate it way more and don't come back and will find any fault on your veneer or something because they then come with the tiny mirror and tell you oh this edges might be a little bit too uh too crooked mm -hmm, mm -hmm. this is not the focus anymore they're mm -hmm. focusing on improvement and of course they get nice teeth and mm -hmm. i thought about aesthetic dentistry. this is how i started um, after university with surgery and aesthetic dentistry this is also when we met chris mm -hmm. and with Andreas back then, uh, an extent, yeah, um, yeah, it's like it's like 12 years ago, so I was yeah. graduating, it's really a long time ago, and yeah, I started with, with aesthetic dentistry because this is the highest technique. And the good thing is, actually, everything a cosmetic dentist does is as biocompatible or as biological, anyways, because we're not using metals, yeah, mm -hmm. course, we'll do a ceramic implant, of course, you will mm -hmm. do the perfect veneers because. Nature is not metals. Nature is metal free. It's like sand or ceramics or whatever. So you can, it's just the next level. You have to have a few um, knowledge gaps, let's say, mm. fit in terms of how the overall body works. But this is just. Mm. So from the patient, from the patient perspective, let me ask you that, you know, if, if let's say I'm a patient again and we, we meet and we are chatting and you're explaining to me what you do and why you are different than a conventional dentist and of course why you believe that this is the best way the way the, the right way to go and i'm thinking that the what you're saying is interesting and i ask you so what is exactly the benefit for me you know if i if i'm a patient you know if you could summarize the benefits for me of going to a dentist that is seeing beyond compared to a dentist that is doing the conventional. If both dentists are very good, let's pretend that from the fundamentals of dentistry, both are at the same level, but one is really uh, going beyond with biological dentistry and all these health optimization concepts. If you could summarize, you know, the three major advantages, uh, the added value for your patient. Yeah, the added value is of course that we are focusing on your overall health, that means we of course look, is there any, from the start, is there any material in your mouth that might disrupt your immune system already or your autonomic nervous system? Of course, we will only place stuff that is, let's say, at least neutral. So we are in the business of reparation. So if there's something broken already, we need to fix it with a better solution at this point of time. Yeah. If you're a healthy body and you have perfect teeth, you don't have to do this. So of course, we will take care of not doing any harm so 
If there's already stuff installed, we will take care of immunology. So Mike, if you're allergic to something, we will take it out. We will have proper solutions for interferences like neuromodulative triggers that can stress your overall system. So we will reduce stressors from your body and also take care about n your nutrition and your lifestyle and, and coach you basically through the next level. Mm -hmm. And I think this is a lot to, to get from like any doctor anyways, if mm -hmm. you can learn so many things in one se session. And of course the whole clinic structure is to improve. Uh, it's, it's more like a spa treatment. You get there, there's no stress. We don't have 50 patients a day. I only do one maximum, two surgeries. We do IVs. We do everything to accommodate. And it's more like, imagine you go to a five-star hotel. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And care, and there's no stress at all. You come in a safe environment and you really, like you said, we're really trying to exceed everything um, that you experience. There's no fear. Even if you're on the chair of a dentist, it doesn't feel like it. It's more mm -hmm. like... Or like a coffee break, like you would say here. Yeah. <laughs> Those that, that actually want to learn something from you and they expect, also, of course, they're very demanding and, and expect mm -hmm. more knowledge, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, but then also, I have to add one point. I don't convince any patient to do this. It's more like the opposite. That you have to basically apply to get a, uh, an appointment in the clinic because I have to have this mindset first. Yeah. Because if it's a patient, yeah, you know what I mean. If it's a patient that doesn't want to take responsibility and doesn't want to change, you will have no results. It's mm -hmm. for both sides, it's bad. So it has to be the same level of energy and then it will be maximized. Mm -hmm. No, no, I like that. You know, the patient needs to be on the same vibe. Of course, the patient needs to, to really believe that they can do better, right? That they can go beyond, you know, if, if you, if you, if you want 10 veneers because you want to look better, and then your biological dentist says, no, but you know, you are allergic to this and you have a lot of that stuff in your mouth and you have this problem, you know, that is showing up on your blood test uh, that is not allowing you to sleep better. And you have this problem with your nutrition that is not allowing you to perform better. Yes, I can do the 10 veneers and you're gonna look a little bit better, but if we go, we take care of the uh, all the other stuff. You're gonna look much better, and and it's m looking better from inside out. You know, you're gonna smile with much more power, and you're gonna use these veneers in a much better way. You know, you're gonna impress people in a much deeper way when you're happy from inside, when you feel better from inside, and when you're really uh, on a different level in terms of of performance. So, yes. what do you think? What do you think are the, the main, if you can give one or two or three examples of things that dentists are missing the opportunity, you know, by not looking into this, you know, common things that we are doing in dentistry that may cause harm uh, or that are overlooked that we should pay attention. If you give so just a few examples for people to understand, you know, how, how much deeper dentistry can be. Yes. So... As I said, the mouth is the entrance to your overall body. It's kind of like the entrance to your gut system. Everybody is talking about gut health. Yeah? Have you heard about leaky gut and, and chronic inflammation there? And for everybody, gut starts here. But actually, your digestion and your gut starts in your mouth, and you cannot imagine how diversified your microbiome is there and how much changes will be there hmm. due to nutrition, but also, very important, due to things that have been installed by conventional dentistry with one purpose, fixing bites and smiles, yeah? And this, the common triggers that stress people nowadays epigenetically, you have to know how stress works, but I can go down deeper later, is any metal nowadays. Metals have three inherent challenges. They can become an immunological problem, yeah, because your body just reacts to it. It's nothing that should be in your body. It can be a toxicological problem, so just toxic. For example, mercury from amalgam fillings, everybody knows already that this is the most toxic, non radioactive element known to men. Shouldn't mm -hmm. be in your body. And the third component is the electric component. You know about oral galvanism, batteries, you know about um, corrosion. But what you maybe not know is that if you live in an environment that is loaded with EMF, electromagnetic fields like 3G, 4G, 5G, all these waves here on this one, etc. Um, 
any metal overall in your body will get will amplify these frequencies and change your whole body electric it's known that emfs are in the, it's carcinogenic since 2019 and they know exactly how it works nobody knows about it and of course there are studies showing that for example if you do a phone call and having amalgam fillings you get way more mercury vapor from the call from the frequencies like mm -hmm. all of the filling for example or if you have just a piercing here it just gets amplified and just let's say it can disrupt your whole nervous system because your body is electric in itself so these are metal problems mm -hmm. all call these root as though the the concept is called oral interference it's a little bit of a weird name but in acupuncture and neurotherapy it's a it's medical we call it neuromodulative triggers what triggers your whole nervous system through an inflammation, an ongoing chronic inflammation, through cytokines, through whatever, in your mouth, on your trigeminus, 24-7. And it could be a root canal, it could be a titanium implant, it can be any metal, it could also be a composite or a glue, like an adhesive that you may be allergic to. So you really have to understand how, the, how everything connects in the overall body. So what does stress even mean? Like, what is a stressor? Do you know about the, the hypothalamus pituitary axis called the stress axis and how this connects to your teeth? Do you know about cytokines? You maybe heard of it because of COVID. But mm -hmm. what about having a cyst on your tooth? Like for years, it doesn't hurt, but maybe you have cytokines through the roof. Of course, you're way more sick than anybody else. And you might not know because nobody looked into your mouth. Mm -hmm. You have an antenna and you, you are feeling weird and have five different symptoms. And the doctor tells you, now nah, you're a psycho. And but you know there's something going on and it's wrong and there is a it's called electro hypersensitivity but maybe this doctor didn't study this but it's a real term now so it's mm -hmm. just knowledge updates and our knowledge actually doubles every six months so you cannot know everything and you didn't study it so you really have to sit there and PubMed and do this I do this for twenty years and this is why I train dentists and doctors and naturopaths to do so so I, I don't have any impact on my own so you have to mm -hmm. all combine our strengths and just learn more and if you open yeah. my head and see oh wow yeah that, that's actually the main challenge you know we i believe that our society makes us believe and our educational process makes us believe that we know enough yes people you know and of course we we everybody says it's a constant evolution you're always learning blah 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 but at the end of the day, we all get stuck, you know, with the things that we learned that people are doing for decades and people don't want to look beyond because it's uncomfortable, you know, to, to look into areas that you have no clue. As a doctor, you say, I'm already practicing for 20 years, you know, whatever. And now there's something that I have no clue about it, you know, and, and this is something that I think we should stimulate that people shouldn't be afraid to open their horizons, to, to really broaden their vision about health. And, and for me, there's one very simple thing that is very clear for me, the fact that uh, we there's so much we don't know, right? We know so little. And, and, and I'm talking about some of the best dentists in the world doing very good dentistry, and we still know so little about the human body and, and the impact of what we do in people's lives. And, and we should be very humble, you know, because I see, I see a lot of people very aggressive about this biological dentistry topic. People get very nervous. People tend to attack the topic, you know, uh, minimize the impact of it, ridicularize even the, the topic. Do you, do you suffer this type of, of, of uh, reactions, you know, with this topic? <laughs> yes, you can't imagine. It's getting way, it's getting better and better, but imagine me doing this 10 years ago on a conventional dentistry podium. So I was kind of like ripped off the podium for like 30 minutes, emotionally being attacked afterwards. A ridicule, denial, and anger is normal. It's like all truth passes through three stages. Like mm -hmm. first, like, you know, you know this, this Mahatma Gandhi thing? Mm -hmm. um, it's going, at first it gets ridiculed, then it gets attacked, and at the end it's self-evident. You never get praise for it. So when I wrote my book, there was, of course, you always get a shitstorm from colleagues, but basically it's their problem. And I know for a fact, all my friends from university, I was already doing this in university. 
So it's a long time ago. They were always like, ah, you, you have to believe these things. And some were really aggressive. And one of my best friends is now my biggest fan because he told me it changed his whole life. He's changed his perspective in, in, in dentistry, mm -hmm. his whole clinic practice every day. Also his health, of course. And he really, he is a specialist now. So I examined him and he said, dude, what I did, what did I miss in terms of overall health for the last 10 years, just by looking in just pure mechanical things. And I can see that there's a change coming. Everybody that gets aggressive, this is always just a mirror from the inside out. This is something, basically it's a fear. Like you said, you're afraid of yeah. maybe you're missing out, but dudes, why? It's just like, like you're saying, you should know that you don't know anything. More like a kid. Be curious. There's something mm -hmm. new. I don't say that what I'm doing is perfect. Not at all. I'm only looking for getting better every day. And look yeah, that's, for that's, ideas. that's very important. You know, somebody bringing something new like you to keep this humble position of saying, I'm not saying I'm right. I'm saying there's more to be learned. You know, we should open our eyes. You know, I'm showing. The, li the, uh, the little part that I already discovered, you know, yes. I already discovered this little part and I just have a feeling that the more I discover what I did know, the more I see there's more to be discovered, you know? And then yes. of course you see the, the, the results on your patients. And I see, you know, because my father was always like that. He was always very holistic, you know, he was always into uh, comprehensive care way beyond dentistry you know he was always into what he calls transdisciplinary dentistry that goes beyond according to him beyond the physical benefits of dentistry and and, and involves energy and involves uh, emotions and involves even spirituality as we all of course believe on that so much and and at the end it's all about energy when you're talking about your topics is understanding about energy and how energy is flowing and where energy is stuck and how energy is working against you and how you're having lack of energy or excess of energy and you know i know so little about it but i'm just fascinated by these topics that shows there's much more to be learned, right? Yeah, 100% agreed. So this is my passion. I I like to wake up and learn new things every day. Never changed since I was a little kid. Um, and this is, yeah, like you said, it's like a tiny bit, but I'm so happy that I have found this because and every day through my own experiences and trying things on my body, but also through the patients, I can learn and improve. And whenever anybody comes and shows me something new, I'm always open. I'm like, I'm never like, oh, no, go away. I know everything. Up opposite. I'm always listening, taking notes, and then I'm trying it. And if I see it's good, I use it. Or maybe, like, it's not good. I just leave it out, try something new. And at the end, when you do this, like, years and years and years, you add your uniquely own, like Bruce Lee said it, yeah? Use what is useful, reject what is not and add you uniquely own and then you come up with concepts and i'm quite sure like for example now we're doing ceramic implants because it's just way more neutral to restore the mindset that i'm having for future generations is we don't need any implants at all my kids will know about nutrition a healthy body is immune against cavity a healthy body is having wide jaws there's all wisdom tooth in there there's no cavitation Mm -hmm. And you don't need any reparation later on. Maybe you need the maybe you need a dentist to tell you how to optimize your health. And and this is the future mindset. So we start educating the parents and the kids. There's so many studies about cavities related to gluten intolerance, about cavities related to vitamin D3 deficiency. This is where we have to start. Weston Price, one of my idols, he wrote a book, Nutrition and Physical Degeneration, more than 100 years ago. He was the um, he was the boss of the ADA, as far as I remember, but he was a big explorer and he looked for tribes in the Aborigines and Africa, Switzerland, and looked how their body were, uh, how their faces were growing and how the teeth looked like and if they had any signs of degeneration. And mm -hmm. what he found was when they had, when these, um, let's say, indigenous people ate their ancestral nutrition and diets, they had perfect white jaws, nose breathing. All wisdom teeth in line, no scoliosis. Whereas their like their kids that might have like contact with sugar and gluten containing grains and refined oils and conventional dairy, like let's say processed foods, they looked like little little monsters. They had like crooked teeth, 
cavities, lots of tartar, mouth breathing. Basically, they look like our teenagers in the Western world 100 years ago. So why does this knowledge not get mm -hmm. it? Like, I'm very, very lucky and happy that finally, through this nutrition stuff, where, where I give courses, um, I'm getting now, like, getting to write articles for the conventional dentistry. They are asking me now, hey, I've listened to your topic about optimal um, osteointegration of ceramic implants and tissue healing through tailored nutrition and micronutrients. Can you write us a topic about this? So finally, conventional dentistry coming through the food and nutrition part. And I'm very mm -hmm. lucky. Mm -hmm. it's already no, it's changed. Gonna happen. It's, it's, it's all going to connect. Yeah. Hopefully, hopefully I, I, I have a strong belief that this decade dentistry will evolve a lot into systemic care and, and holistic uh, strategies like this one. You know, the other topic, you know, airway uh, and the, 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 the things that we can do with dentistry to help people sleep better, breathe better. You know, I think this is going to become a huge topic. And combined with this, you know, systemic health, health optimization, you go to a dentist that understands all these things and, and, and you're very lucky, you know, that somebody can actually help you beyond just biting the teeth together, right? Biting the teeth together. So I want you to finish today our chat. I want you to give us some insights about specific technologies. And by the way, this was actually the initial topic, the reason why we started to chat again and the reason why I... I invited you again because I asked you, um, you know, on, on on the personal chat that we were having, and say, hey, Dom, you know, just just tell me. Uh, uh, I was actually writing about how technology is helping dentists, and was it basically from the classical perspective, you know, the scanners and 3D CAD CAM softwares and and uh, printers and the restorative implant, ortho digital orthodontics, so the dental stuff, and then. I remembered uh, of, of your topic and I called you and I said, look, from your perspective, you know, what are the technologies available today? You know, not the conventional dentistry technologies, but technologies that dentists can have to improve the way they gather information, they gather metrics, they track those numbers and allow them to understand better their patients and provide better healthcare to their patients. What are the main technologies, cool technologies that are available nowadays? Yeah, for clinic setup, I would say that the you could use cutting edge um, tools that at the moment are most likely more in like a sports performance center, but we're using this for, basically everything is about recovery. How can I help my patient's system or body to heal and recover as fast as possible? So if you can make an implant osteointegrate in better timing or yeah. faster without any failure, why not use it? So we use red light therapy. Yeah, this is basically different um, light frequencies that show tons of research in helping just the mitochondria produce more ATP. They help with wound healing, recovery. You can just basically place them in front of the face or use an overall thing. I don't have one here, but it's in in the clinic. And you can what we do is we're stacking these things. We kind of like have a menu, like you would go to a spa. You can say, okay, I want to have this, this, and this in my menu. Of course, we do a lot of intravenous um, nutrients in terms of techniques. It's not too much, but it's very important to use that. And we use hyperbaric oxygen therapy. This is basically a chamber where you can go in to a, yeah, let's say it's just a pressurized chamber. You could go to 1.5 atmosphere and then instead of like the normal blood oxygenation, you know, you normally have like, if you do this finger thing, the mm -hmm. oxygenator, you normally have like 99% like oxygen saturation. But what about your tissues? Sometimes your tissues are starving. And what this machine is doing because of the pressure and the oxygen that's coming in through some, um, uh, through your nose, you get highly concentrated oxygen in the pressure environment inside your tissues. Your plasma gets oxygenated. So you, again, recover and heal faster. This is stuff like Nadal has in his chamber, like mm -hmm, mm -hmm. high-class athletes. But it also improves healing. And there are studies showing that it also helps with um, bone fractures and things. Normally, these chambers are huge and are mostly for, like, trauma from diving. And 
and are in bigger clinics, but nowadays they are in like tinier versions that you can put for one piece single unit into your clinic, mm -hmm. like your health optimization sphere. And also an another thing we do is we combine intravenous nutrients with light. So light is a huge topic. In terms of research, there's everything out there, guys. You just didn't see it yet, but Google or PubMed low level laser therapy, LLLT, there are tons of, is tons of research. What we do is we have, let's say, intravenous vitamin B3 or vitamin C or any other substance that is light sensitive. We can have a laser go into your vein and advance or, let's say, amplify. Amplify is the word I'm missing. And amplify the use of it because we know that the same thing happens when you go out in light. This is why we use red light too. Just to use na the nature, which you normally would do, you go into sunlight, you get all these mm -hmm. activities. And we know that the body is actually able to do something like photosynthesis. It's not the same because we're not plants, mm -hmm. but we actually can by the use of um, yeah, molecules that activate that get activated to different light spectrums, can amplify this and produce our own energy through, through light. It's amazing technology. And it's used in cosmetic um, cosmetic care. Mm -hmm. and it, it, I, I'm quite sure that this will um, find its place in conventional dentistry or biological dentistry for sure. I'm an early adopter, so I use all these things, but I'm training, so it's coming. This is really cutting edge things that will also help you, of course. Imagine you as a doctor, you, you have to be, in my opinion, you have to be as healthy as possible, kind of like a performance athlete. Mm -hmm. You have you have a really stressful work. You maybe have to concentrate for five hours straight surgery. What about you eat crap food? Or what about you have your own lab where you can go once a week and tune yourself so it's you can get healthier and more mm -hmm. optimized as well as your patients. So it's a win, 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 win for everybody. Mm -hmm. So there's lots of tools to use. So I could probably go further on, but of course use lab works, use blood tests. And we have different centers. allergy tests and blood tests. Yeah, all that's possible. But then, we, in my opinion, what you need to know, and this is why knowledge is so important. You, as the doctor, you should know why you're doing this, have experienced it, and then time it wisely. When does the patient needs what the most? And this is where experience comes in. So I'm able to prescribe the different treatments, tell you exactly when you should go on a chelation with another doctor. Tell you exactly how many uh, sessions you need per this and per this. This is more like knowledge that you can use. Luckily, I do it for a long time, so I can nail it down to like easy, applicable things mm -hmm. and um, get trained there. So this is really, I think it's, I think it's just next level things that we should use. We also, we also use this one, right? Yeah. So ten years ago, you couldn't imagine that you can see somebody through a phone, right? But an implant 10 years ago looks the same as an implant nowadays. So why are we not upgrading our knowledge there? We just yeah. have to use it. We want to be cyborgs in an unnatural environment. So why not hack yourself to be able mm -hmm. to don't get sick, but more healthy? Yeah, and definitely improve your resistance to things yeah. like COVID, right? <laughs> everybody, everybody, you know, with this world pandemic, you know, number one, uh protection is your immune system uh, it's more much better than anything else right and i 100 agree to know, know what the basis for your immune system is is your nutrition it's protein it's amino acids it's more like your life mm -hmm. you have a good immune system if you are yeah if you take care of your body and your overall health treat your body like a temple that's basically it you live in there and it's like you say it's not just a physical level. There's an energy level that's tra traditional Chinese medicine, acupuncture, neurotherapy. There's a mental level. There's a spiritual level. And this is all kind of like a pyramid. But the base is what you do on a daily basis, like your lifestyle, yeah. your nutrition. Yeah. So yeah. at the wider you can get it, the better. And of course, if there's things installed in your mouth or in, the patient, in your patient's mouth that disrupt this or make your internal environment unnatural, of course, this will have consequences over the time. Maybe you can compensate for it, but maybe you got sick already. This is your yeah. own genetic. Everybody's different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no perfect. There's no perfect rule. There's no uh, exact answer. It's all about probabilities. And by uh, by applying these things, you're just increasing probabilities of becoming healthier, right? Um, you you actually wrote a book. What what? 
Tell us a little bit about your book. Yeah, the book is written for the layman. It's not a medical textbook. It's, um, of course, it's science-based, uh, but it's more about the whole concept. It's called It's All in Your Mouth in English. It's translated to almost every country besides actually Spanish-speaking countries yet. Uh, I don't know why, but it's probably coming anyways. And yeah, I'm explaining, of course, everything about the things you need to know in terms of techniques. There's a lot about the oral microbiome in it, in it so that you really get to know the oral cavity and the immune system in there and how that at the end of the book, you know about nutrition, about macronutrients, you know about micronutrients, the critical little things that you need to fine tune and what can disrupt your, your whole system. And it's written for the patient, mm -hmm. but also of course for a newbie dentist because it's in an easy manner and you can go deeper mm -hmm. fantastic it's, a, it's yeah. it, because we need I'm, an army of biological dentists yeah. so I cannot believe how many patients are looking for you guys yeah. and you have a unique ability to basically see the whole internal environment in one little look into this mouth when you know all the concepts what you have to look for besides reparation yeah I believe, I believe dentists have a privilege position in terms of of having this relationship with their patients you know and seeing the patients once or twice a year so it's really very powerful if we can use that this relationship to go beyond just average uh clinical uh treatments right um fantastic topic man i, I we could stay here talking about this forever uh i think it's a super important topic as you said we need uh, an army of new uh, young doctors wanting to take this to the next level. Most of the questions are unanswered. Most of the field is unexplored. Uh, patients, you know, I can say patients love this. They really feel like we are taking care of them beyond normal, beyond average. So there's a beautiful side effect of growing your reputation. You know, people like to see doctors that are seeing beyond and trying to give back uh, above their expectations. And this is exactly uh, what people like you are doing. And I think hopefully this topic will grow. My friend, just to end, you know, thank you again for your time, uh, for your know-how. And hopefully we're going to be able very soon to meet in person and again and uh, chat about this but live with uh, with a good German beer in our hands, celebrating life, celebrating yeah. the end of this craziness, and uh, enjoying uh, friendship, and that's the most important. So if you can give your final message and your final goodbye to the DSD community, please. Yeah, thanks, Chris, for having me. Thanks, guys, for listening to this. And yeah, as I said, be open-minded to new things. This concept really held place in, in the pandemic because it's slow. It's like biological dentistry is like really taking care and focusing. And we were just able to work normally because we're improving health. And like I said, I believe health starts in your mouth. So learn and look further. Um, we are training a lot. So you will find everything probably on my Instagram with the tap bio. And I, I can't wait to meet you or see you in person, maybe together also with Miguel and have a good time. Yeah, drinking gin tonics, whatever, eat some good food. <laughs> yeah, just that's what, what you said. I'm totally agreeing. It's all about being a community and don't be aggressive to anybody. Just be friends and good vibes. That's all yeah. that we're here for, right? Improve health and, yeah, and vibing. That's it. That's it, my friend. Thank you very much and see Thank you soon. You. See you soon. Thanks for having me. Bye-bye.